welcome back to the Growing Band Director Podcast. This is episode number 106, and I'm very pleased on today's podcast to share with you a clinic with Michelle Fernandez, who's an educator and composer in Florida. And this is a clinic basically getting your school-aged band as authentically sounding as possible in a Latin style. So in this, she works with a great middle school band. She'll introduce uh, everybody in that, but they work on her new chart called Autumn Leaves. And it's really fascinating. So I'm really glad to bring this to you today. Enjoy. All right. Good morning, everybody. So uh, we've got Miami Art Studio here. And uh, the director is Eric Rivero from Miami, Florida. And this particular group is made up mostly of sixth to eighth graders. And uh, we're going to be doing a master class to talk about some of the aspects of the performing qualities uh, that we would like to uh, achieve here for Autumn Leaves, which is um, actually a Son Montuno arrangement of a well-known standard. And uh, the, the title in parentheses is Hojas Caídas, which means fallen leaves. So these lovely students have volunteered to kind of uh, be our uh, models here for this master class. So first of all, Eric, can you tell us uh, a little bit about the school and, and how, how you ended up there? Sure. Um, this is my fifth year here, um, and this is my 28th year teaching, and uh, fifth year here at the school, and we have three jazz bands, and it's an all-magnet uh, school, so we have nine different magnets, and uh, so it's a, it's a great program. We have three concert bands, three... Uh, Three Latin band, uh, sorry, three jazz bands and then one Latin band. So as far as our ensembles go. Um, Eric, would, would you like to kick it off? And then um, how we can do this is I'll wave my hands and then the students will let you know that, it, that, that I'd like you to stop so that we can talk about a few things, okay? Um, but now before we even start, I wanna talk to you guys very quickly about articulation. And there are some, some metaphors that I like to use when I'm talking about articulation. And, and I'm sure that you've gotten all this conversation before from your wonderful director. But remember, whenever we do a clinic or a master class, we're only there to reinforce the things that your directors have already said. We're not going to say anything magical. We're just going to use different words to say it. So as you approach this tune, Try your best to think of the lines being played as smoothly as possible, number one. Number two, whenever you see the articulations, try to make them sound like something that you can visualize. For example, when I see a staccato in jazz band, as opposed to in symphonic band, in symphonic band, I like to think D-I-H, so it kind of bounces off like a drop of water bouncing off a leaf or a ping pong ball bouncing off a timpani head. Okay, but on this, since we want a little bit more of, of, of a stopping sound, I like to think dip and like a drop of water, just dropping one at a time from a faucet, drip, 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 drip. It's still light because it's a drop of water. Now, as opposed to, let's say a rooftop, it's important that we make them sound different. So we've got drip, drip, and then we've got this rooftop and we want it to sound like dot. And I like to think D-A-H-T. So, What's the first thing that you guys see when you get out of your car and you're walking towards Target? What do you see sitting on the sidewalk? That big fat red ball, right? So dot, it has a beginning, full body, and it has an end to it. So I like to think drip, drip on the staccato and dot with the rooftops. So make them sound that different. Now on the tenuto markings or the long lines on top of the notes or any notes that don't have any assume that they're long think about a perfectly folded paper airplane that you just make it fly and glide all over the room and it's just kind of fl flying and just gently gently gliding super smoothly try to make those lines sound that smooth then on an accent and here's the big one people tend to play accents loud and accents are not really loud really the accent has a beginning attack, and I don't like to use the word attack, but you hit it, then it has different parts to it. It bounces off, and then it arcs downward. If it doesn't have those parts, it's not an accent. And that's really what gives the line life. For example, if I said, I saw a great movie last night, and I said it loud, that's not really convincing. But if I said, I saw a great movie last night, 
I didn't say that any louder, but I accented certain words and I hit them and arc down and that gave the line more interest. So you're more likely to want to check out the second movie than the first one. Now, as far as like visualizing, I like to think of like if you take a basketball, you're standing against the wall and you're looking up, you take the basketball and you throw it against the wall. What does it do when it hits the wall? It immediately bounces off and it arcs down. So anytime you see an accent, make it sound like da, da, da. And you're going to do it with your gut, not so much with more harsh tonguing, but with your gut as if you're trying to blow a candle across the room. So if you can think of those things visualizing as you're playing all of this, remember, drip, drip of a faucet, the fat red target ball, dot, then gliding paper airplane smooth, all of the smooth lines, and then the basketball bouncing off the wall on the accents, da, da. Do that anytime you see any of these, and the entire tune will sound tighter. And this goes for any chart you guys play. It'll sound tighter right away. For the rhythm section, this is just a general thing, and I know you guys have already rehearsed this. There are three basic grooves that we'll use on the drum set. Not on this chart, though. One of them is songo, which is kind of like a salsa, son montuno, funk, kind of jazz hybrid, okay? That's a bit more of a modern groove. We're not using songo at all on this chart. This chart uses two main grooves, cascara and campaneo. Those are the grooves that are used by a timbal player. Because back in those days, they didn't use drum set in those bands. They used the timbal player, the conga player, and all of the other auxiliary percussion. So the two grooves, the cascara, if you think, don't tell mama, I failed the test granny, 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 that's it. That's the right hand pattern. Kind of like that, okay? It's a two bar pattern. So we're going to use that on the A section. Then when we get to the B section, we switch it to what's called campanile, which elevates the groove a little bit more. And there it's give me chocolate milk, but no banana. Give me chocolate milk, but no banana. Give me chocolate milk, but no banana. And that's it. And those are just phrases that, that I use whenever I do a clinic. Uh, just, it, it just helps everyone kind of learn that more quickly. So we're going to use that at the bridge, at the B sections, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start this out. I know I did some talking at the beginning, but just to kind of lay down the fabric to what we're going to be looking for. One other comment before we start, percussion. Make sure that whenever the band comes in after the introduction, you come right down and remember that we're going to help build underneath the horn section, okay? So come way down at the beginning of the, 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 the melodic statement. Da, ba, ba, ba. Bring it down for cascara. And then little by little, we're going to elevate. And then when we get to the bridge, then we bring it up just a little bit. Okay. So our job is to support the horn section underneath. We never want to cover them, but we want to help them build. Okay. Which means we have to adjust our dynamics too, as the piece increases in intensity or comes back down. Okay. You guys want to kick it off, Eric? Ready? One, one, two, one, two, ready, and. You know what, I, I would actually take this a little faster. Um, I, I know that on the uh, on the sample recording, it's a little bit on the slower side, but just to make it a little bit more danceable tempo. Uh, well, it's 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 danceable on this tempo as well. But just just um, if we can bring it up just a couple more notches more like It just gives it a little bit more of a lively kind of feel to it. Now, a couple things. Try your best to observe the accents, because when you do the accents, and we're, we're kind of doing it, we're, we're definitely almost there, and I definitely appreciated your, your groove, 
Um, and then when you guys come in on the horns, remember, put your cup behind it because it gives the line life. Okay. Now, on the piano solo, um, if if the score says play as written, make sure that we do. And um, because th there are some spots where it'll say suggested solo. But if, if it says as written, that means that the composer actually wanted what was written to actually be played there, okay? However, what you played sounded pretty cool. Definitely appreciated that. Um, now, here's the thing. Whenever the pianist plays, like when the bass plays, rhythm section come way down and get underneath the piano so that the focal point can be that piano line because the piano player is, is not uh, amplified and it's an acoustic setting. So we really want to hear that. Now, when we get to number 16, da -de -da -de, come way down. Trombones, you sounded great, but I'd like you to play that so that it doesn't feel like you're kind of really pushing your volume. So it feels like you're just kind of cruising. You know what I mean? You're cruising and it just sounds cool and breezy. Da -de -da -de -de. Okay, can we try that right there? And Eric, if you don't mind, you count them off like a one, two, three, four, ba, 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 boom, and come in. So if you can count them off to come in the bar before 16. Now everyone come way down, but remember, don't, don't slow down. Because that's the first thing people do when we ask them to come to down in tempo, the tempo slows down. So keep the tempo smooth and trombones come down just a little bit because remember you're in unison, okay? So you don't really have to fight that much to be heard and make it sound totally breezy. And then saxes, when you guys come in at 24, make it kind of glide, make it sound like that paper airplane just kind of gliding all over the room. Okay, they don't pay me to sing around here. So I just ignore my singing quality, but just make it sound totally, totally smooth. Okay, make it almost sound dreamy. If you can, let's try that. So pickups to uh, 16, ready? Right. And maybe if you can just pick up the tempo just a little bit. So remember, pick up the tempo just a little bit, okay? But bring down the volume so that the trombones can sound super smooth and relaxed. Go ahead. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, four, one. <laughs> Okay, that 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 was a little bit better. Good job, good job. Now, on, on the congas. Well, first of all, I'm going to make this comment. This is to any any directors who are who are watching. The way that Eric has this set up, and we talked about it beforehand. In order to fit everybody on camera, he had to set everything up the way it is right now. But normally, Eric uh, has it set up as as we normally do, which is the skins are in the front. So the conga player would normally be on the floor with feet wrapped around the, the left conga, the smaller one, and um, not, not on stands. If you're on carpet, they sell those little um, rubber feet to elevate it and sitting in front of the drum set, okay? So normally we'll put the timbales further back because a timbal player is loud enough that they, 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 they can beat the whole band. But the congas, we're gonna put them in the front, okay? This is just here temporarily. Now on the congas, if we could have a little bit more pop on that slap on beat two. So if you got this, if we can have that pop and it, it should hurt a little bit, okay? You get used to it, but okay. So see if that cuts through and, and here's the thing on these styles, you guys, on these styles, the conga player drives the bus, not the drummer. The conga player and the bass actually have the two uh, rhythm patterns that hold the whole thing all together along with the clave. See, when you're playing son montuno, because this is a son montuno style, which is also known as salsa, okay? There are the salsa styles. You got son montuno, mambo, and we'll, we'll 
we'll get into that some other time. But on these styles, the conga player drives the bus because the conga player is the one that has straight eighth notes. So the pattern there, you got heel, toe, slap, then toe, heel, toe. And some people use, use the term fingers, okay? I use the term toe, even though we don't want it to be toe like this, but toe, but with flattened fingers, okay? Just because it's easier to say heel, toe, slap, toe, heel, toe. It's harder to say heel, finger, slap, you know? So heel, toe, slap, toe, heel, toe. And then, gung, gung. the four and those are open tones, okay? So we've got, these are practice congas, so they, they, they don't sound great, but heel, toe, slap, toe, heel, toe. And basically what you have, and I'm gonna lower the camera here just a little bit so that you can all see this, okay? Basically, you keep your hand flat, and this is for, for all of you. You keep your hand flat on heel, so heel, toe, that's the first two eighth notes. One, and, then slap, okay? One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. If you get that sound right there, that's called the tumbao. It's T-U-M-B-A-O. That's the name of the of the conga player's groove. Now, guess what? The name of the bass player's groove, dun, gong, 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 gong. that is also called the tumbao. Those two terms are the same. There's a reason. Because in Spanish, tumbao means knocked out or laying down. Okay? So guess what? The bass and the conga player, they actually lay down the groove. That's why their groove is called the tumbao. Now, the piano player's groove is called the montuno. The two grooves that the drummer is going to play, which are the timbal player's grooves with the right hand, is the cascara and the campanel. We already talked about that. Okay. Okay. So now with that said, what we want to have is focal point on the straight eighth note pattern of the conga. If the entire band can focus on that, everyone as you're playing this, we can start right on 16 or pick up to 17 again. But what I'd like you to do is everyone listen to the eighth note pattern on the conga and lock in all your rhythms because you guys have a complex jigsaw puzzle happening right now. You've got clave going on, which in this case is two, three clave. Okay. And for you directors out there, if you're not sure how to figure out if something is two, three clave or three, two clave, take the melodic line, chop it up into two bar segments. And wherever you have the strongest on beat, that's the two side, okay? You never wanna be in reverse, in, in, in the wrong clave, because that would be like doing the hi-hat on a swing chart, doing the hi-hat on one and three instead of two and four. So it just throws the whole thing off. So this case is two, three clave. So can we try it at 17 or pick up to 16, I'm sorry. And this time, let's have a little bit more pop on slap on the congas and a little bit more pop on the open tone of the four end. Okay, so heel toe, slap toe, heel toe, and work on being a metronome, like a machine. All right, can we try that again? And hopefully that'll help it lock in even more. I didn't mean to cut you off there on your solo. Nice job on your solo, much appreciated. Okay, so when we get to the bridge, so we've got 16, da, 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 right? When we get to the next part, then at that time, like if we could have the melody people drop down a little bit so that we can hear with a little bit more clarity those 
counter melodies in the background. Okay, so when we get to the bridge, da da ba 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 da do da, that's when we switch to the campanile groove on the drum set. Okay, now and again, I'm going to be talking about things uh, for anyone who's watching. And I'm sure I'm discussing things that you guys have already been told. But when you guys get to the bridge, uh, which is at 32, okay, da do da 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 ba da, that's where we switch to the campanero groove in the rhythm section. Now here is where the conga player switches the groove too. Now I've only got one conga here, but I kind of need both. But and it, that's that groove right there switches, okay to match what's going on with the drum set. Now on the drum set with that right hand, campaneo, that's the next groove, literally means bell in Spanish. So those two grooves, we can do them on the bell of the ride cymbal. It's got to cut through. We can do it on a mounted cowbell. We can also do it on the edge of the ride cymbal for a little bit more of a gentle sound, okay? Now, <clears throat> on the bass, what I definitely appreciate is the fact that you're playing that groove actually rather well. Can we have just a little bit more pop on the percussive attack of the string? Remember, you know, like if you're, you're playing in an upright and it's not amplified, let's say, and you're in a club and people are talking and you want that bass to be heard across the room. So if you give it that and here's the thing for all of you to know and to be aware of in these styles, the bass and the bass drum pedal are one. Because really the function of the bass drum pedal is just to add a little bit more punch to the bass line. We could actually get away with not having any bass drum on this at all. Okay, which is why they did the timbales. You didn't need the bass drum because you had the bass going. Dum, tukum, tukum, tukum. So we're just there to add a little bit more punch to that bass line, okay? Now, can we have, please, can I hear the rhythm section of 32? And here's the thing. If you can get the rhythm section cooking with more of the little accents here and there, okay? And then when you do the campanile groove, you see where I'm putting accents? And I'm actually doing a little crescendo on that groove. Those things right there add more crack and pop to your groove. Now think about this. Saxes, trombones, and trumpets, you guys are like slices of bacon. Okay, we're gonna cook breakfast. So you've got slices of bacon. What happens, and 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 rhythm section, you guys are not cold at all. You're you're doing a great job. What happens if you've got a pan and you've got the grease and it's it's kind of warm, but it's not really crackling yet. What happens when you put the bacon in, in grease that's not totally cracking? It just kind of sits there, right? So you got the bacon, you put it in and, it's just, and it just kind of sits there floppy, right? But if you've got the rhythm section. And again, rhythm section, you guys are like the frying pan and you've got this hot grease crackling, crackle, crackle, crackle. Then you take the rhythm section that's cooking, you take the slices of bacon and throw them in the pan. And what do you hear? You hear psh, the whole thing sizzles. So rhythm section, in order to make you guys sizzle, it doesn't require a volume. It's not about volume at all. It's about putting accents in strategic spots. Okay, so can we add a little bit more of that? So rhythm, congas. Let me have a little bit more. So more pop on beat two, the slap, and more pop on the four and toms, okay? Then drums. Okay? So if you if you remember the phrase, give me chocolate milk, give me chocolate milk, okay? The word give me, accent on me, milk, and then na. Give me chocolate milk, but no banana, none, okay? And then on the bass, boom, 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 really pop on the end of two. Now on the montuno, this is some, and you, luckily you aren't doing this, but just to, just, just to talk about it so that it's said. A lot of times on these montuno patterns, piano players will go, and it sounds choppy. 
This also needs to glide like that paper airplane gliding all over the room. Okay, so making that line sound as smooth as possible, but yet adding the accent. So remember these two words, smooth and accented on the Montuno. Okay, so can we put a little bit more accent in there? Okay, now the rest of you horn players, this is one suggestion that will help you play and feel the music even more is if you allow your body to move a little bit. And I know it's it's eight o'clock in the morning, so most of us don't really want to move much at eight o'clock in the morning. But whenever you perform this or when you're practicing, allow yourself to move with the music. And this goes for any style you play. Because if you allow your body to move with the music, you're actually going to feel more what's happening and you're going to get more immersed in the groove. Everything is going to be tighter and everything is going to groove more. Whenever I'm uh, adjudicating a festival or doing clinics where we're listening the band after band after band, I will tell you that the bands that groove and move with the music, I notice that they tend to play with more feeling. It's like, you know, if you're watching somebody play the Mozart oboe concerto on oboe and they're standing up and playing and they're standing really stiff like this, and then you see someone moving with the music and moving with the lines, Chances are, obviously it's not always, but chances are the person who's moving with the music is playing more expressively because their whole body is, in, is involved in the expression. So this kind of stuff is fun to move to, so allow yourself to move a little bit while you're playing, okay? This is just a general performance uh, and rehearsal tip. Now, can we try the bridge at 32? This time, a little bit more accents on the piano, okay? Let's add everybody, ready? Everybody right on, uh, Eric, can you count them off going into 30, sure. into 31, the pick up into the bridge. So one, two, three, four, one, da, 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 da. Now trumpets, remember, hit the note and back off on the accent. Make it, uh, every accent note, make it bounce. Like that basketball bouncing off the wall. Da, 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 dee, dee. Okay, go ahead. Ready, one, one, two, three, four, one. <laughs> Good. So now we're this part where we stop right there. De -da 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 See what happens there is that you guys are actually mimicking the end of two that the bass has. So if everyone lines up the end of two, then the whole thing grooves because the bass player's hitting end of two. Don't go, right? Don't go, 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 go. So think about that when you guys are playing that anytime you have an and of two accent it's actually lining up with what the bass player is doing okay. Um, now, when you have D that Dow bar 32 3 34 35 36 uh, actually the bar numbers are on the bottom bar 38 the horn players most of you have dot it Dow that fall on the end of two again it's going to line up with the bass hit. Do a quick lift fall dot it Dow. Da, 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 da. It's just a quick little drop with your lip. That's it. Make sure it doesn't hang over because the eighth rest that comes after that is very important. Okay. So do it da, do it da, do da, and then saxes do it da, do da. Remember, guys, just in general, accents they bounce. Make them bounce. Okay. Um, all right. So can we have jump to the next section because we don't have much time left. Um, we're going to jump to the next section and can we try 92 can we try it right everybody at 92 let's see what's happening at 92 eric if you want to go ahead and count it off Now, watch. 
watch out because on the bass, what we don't want to do is end up on the beat. Okay, we need to anticipate. So one, two, one, two. The four is on the beat, but that and of two always has to be, and it's almost like you're throwing your shoulders forward when you're playing, you know? I don't mean you are, but like if you think of it. So one, two, gong, gong. One, two, gong, gong. So throw you, you kind, of, kind of throw yourself into the and of two so that it doesn't end up on beat three. Watch out with that. That's super, super important. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave you with this, with this parting comment. Think of <clears throat> any time we're playing any style, but especially a style that has intricate rhythms all interlocking. Remember that you're part of a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, when you were younger, let's say, and you had a jigsaw puzzle that had 10 pieces, it, it was always easy to tell which piece went where. But as soon as you got older and you started doing jigsaw puzzles that had, let's say, a thousand pieces, all of a sudden you pick up a piece and you're sure it's the one. You pick it up and you're about to put it in place and it looks like it's going to fit. But when you press it in place, you're like, oh, that's not the piece. It doesn't fit. I thought it was. And here's the thing, when you've got that many pieces, when you've got this many rhythms, they have to fit together really snug and tight, perfect. Which means you as an individual, make sure you really, really lock in. And I mean really lock in on exactly every single note. Make sure you're placing it right on time with what you're hearing rhythmically in your rhythm section. And you guys are lucky, you've got a great rhythm section that's really laying down the correct groove. Can we have a little bit more pop? Yes, but everything can always improve, right? So on the bass, make sure that, again, you anticipate and you end up before the beat. Remember, you're anticipating, okay? Now, the horn players, remember also, same concept. Sometimes saxes, you guys have the montuno. That's a montuno. Okay? And sometimes the horns, you guys actually have percussion pops. Ba, ba, da, da, ba, go. Okay, so think of yourselves as percussionists, in a sense. And percussionists, think of yourself as horn players. So think of yourself as horn players when it's time to accent certain notes, whenever you guys do articulations. Okay, and horn players, think of yourselves as percussionists when you're talking about precision. Okay, so anyway, with that said, I, I wanted to thank you so much for being here this morning and for agreeing to kind of be our example group so that we can do this master class for other students who might want to play um, autumn leaves in this style or any any other arrangement. Um, so, uh, Mr. Rivero, thank you so much. There's just a lot of great stuff going on here uh, in this band program and much appreciated. And uh, I just want to give you guys a round of applause. Can you please give each other, yourselves a round of applause and just congratulate each other. And when you go home for the summer, make sure you don't put your horns down. Practice and just enjoy it. Play along with recordings. Keep it fresh so that, so that you don't lose your steam. And I know you guys are going to be coming back to uh, an outstanding program in the fall, especially after what I just heard right now. You guys are in the middle school because th this is middle school combined high school, correct? Yes. Yeah. So if the middle school sounds this, you know, if it sounds this good, I can just imagine how, how you guys are going to sound when, when you move up to the high school groups. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and please give it up for Ms. Fernandez. <laughs> We really appreciate you uh, spending time with us. I definitely appreciate everything I heard and uh, and and the cooperation and the uh, the teaching. Just fantastic teaching going on as always. I really appreciate it. We sincerely appreciate you taking your valuable time and listening to the Growing Band Director podcast. Your students are very lucky to have a band director like you. If you have any suggestions for episode topics or think you have an area of expertise to share on a show with us, please reach out. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to help spread the word, please give us a five-star review and tell your band director friends to subscribe as well. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube channel, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening to The Growing Band Director. See you next week.